Our beautiful country is very beautiful, but it's spiritually um, impoverished. It's spiritually very poor. And people there have money, they're clean, they're educated, they're advanced, and we have everything in Malaysia, everything. But we still feel unhappy, we still feel no purpose, we still feel like when we're old, we just wait for a grandson or a granddaughter, we just think about making money. And that all that's not bad, but if it's just that, after a while, everybody gets disillusioned. Even we live there, even we don't know where disillusioned we are because we don't know what else to do. So we get caught in that trap of just being stuck in Kuala Lumpur, in Malaysia, in Singapore, all that. And we just work and work and work and we get married, we have kids, you know, we have grandkids and that's the way everybody does things, that's the way it's supposed to be and that's the way it is and whether I'm happy or unhappy, it doesn't really matter because that's what everybody does and I'm supposed to be happy. So we kind of just go along with it. I'm not saying those people are wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying that there's more. So here, people are very poor, over poverty stricken but I'd rather be born here. When I come here, I feel like I'm at home. I love seeing the monks and the nuns circumambulating the prayer. I love going to the temples. I love to do my pujas. I, the mountains, just seeing the mountains, seeing the air and seeing the environment, it totally just makes me want to do retreat and practice and, and hold my vows and do that. I really want to do that. So my point is because the whole environment supports you here. Whereas in, well, we're in KL, whereas in KL or wherever we live, when we feel down, when we feel depressed, we only have Kichara House. And if we don't know a lot of Dharma, in Kichara House, sometimes we come across difficulties, human problems, relational problems. And that's natural. But you see, when we go into Kichara House and we come across relationship problems with people, we think, well, they represent Dharma and I don't like this, I'm getting out of here. And when you leave Kichara House, you leave the doors and you go outside of Kichara House, Everything out there says make money, make babies, make money, make babies, have fun, enjoy. Nothing encourages you. Whereas if you're living in a Dharma center here or living in a monastery here or living here in a house, even if you get upset at your temple, even if you get upset with people there, even if you're not happy, the minute you go outside, everywhere you look, people are doing Dharma. Everywhere you look, they're circumambulating, praying, and prostrating. And it puts you to shame. It makes your problem very small and encourages you to go back to Dharma. Why? Because the whole environment here supports your Dharma practice. The whole environment here helps you to be Dharma. The whole environment here, so even people you don't know and people you're not going to talk to when you look outside, they're doing Dharma. In KL, where is that like that? Where is that? So in KL, when we're upset with something, when we're not happy about something, we just leave. Or if we don't leave, if we feel lazy, we don't want to get involved, we don't want to do any work, we just get involved with our own work and we just go away. Because why? We don't have that support factor like we have here. Here, you may be upset, you may be upset, some people have the audacity to be upset with their guru here, and then when they go out, they see other people following their guru and talking and practicing, they go, oh, oh I shouldn't do that. But in KL, if you get upset with your guru, you tell them, they go, yeah, get him, get him, kill that monk. It's very different here. And then in KL, if you're upset with someone in Dharma Center, you go out, people say, I told you. Your mother say, I told you, get married, lah. Your mother, your father say, I told you, where's my friend's son? I told you. And then they say, what? Something wrong with you. You're in Dharma. Here, completely different. So my point is, here the spiritual energy is so powerful and so invigorating. It is so dirty here. It is so dusty here. It is so dirty and dusty, yet we feel happy. A, we're going to be here part-time. We're going back to our environments. We know that, but subconsciously. But really, a part of that also is we feel the spiritual energy here, the sincerity of the people, the happiness, happiness in inverted commas, and the acceptance, the acceptance. So therefore, I would like to bring this back to beautiful Malaysia. And hence, I brought a lot of you here to open and awaken your spiritual mind. And I want you to see how other people live and exist. Some of you, I'm sure, have been to Nepal before. But you have not been to Nepal until you've been here with me. Why is that? Because I'm not here to soak in the culture and the economics and, and all that. I'm here to soak in the spirituality. So wherever I go, you ask me the history of the place, I know nothing and I, I could care less. But I'll explain to you the meaning, what we're supposed to do, and the significance, and to get the most out of it. Why? My job is spiritual. And I will do that all the way. So hence, I make a lot of effort to go to all the holy places with all you guys and talk and do what I need to do. I've been to all of them. Because 
you guys and many people more in KL will be the pioneers to bring all of this back to our country. And from our country, the nearby countries, it'll spread. And to the other countries, to the other countries, so we can bring spiritual and spiritual energy and, and infusion into our cultures so that we remain Malaysians and we do as we are and we act as we are, but inside we are, we have a bigger purpose than that. It's okay to have a nice place to live. It's okay to make money. It's okay to do what you're doing, but it has to be more. If it's not depression, unhappiness will settle in. So hence, I would like to bring this, what we feel here to Malaysia. And that's why I want my 11 departments to grow and I want TKL to manifest to bring this back, to bring this back. So therefore, wherever you are, whatever you do, you think, how can I benefit people? Individually in this room, some of us can benefit, some of us do, some of us cannot. But if we combine our forces, whatever we are deficient in, the other person can do. Whatever they're deficient in, I can do. So if we join forces, very, very powerful. Committed all the way to do something meaningful in your life. So therefore, if we consistently hold our vows and we consistently have good Guru Samaya and we consistently perpetuate our Dharma protector of Kichara House consistently, then things will manifest. Things will definitely manifest. So therefore, um, again, I am very happy to take you all on this trip. I will go for spiritual pilgrimages in the future life for Gaia and Gandhian and I will invite you guys. If you behave yourself, why? If you think this is powerful, those places will be just as powerful, but the experience will be different. It will add and enrich your life. Now that I can see my organizers can take care of bigger crowds, I will invite bigger people. I didn't invite more. This is by invitation only this time. Only invitation because I don't want to overburden my people. But I see they can handle more in the future and they will learn to handle more. And that's very, very good. When we read, when we read the Wheel of Shock Weapons constantly and consistently and meditate, We'll understand Buddha's teachings. We'll understand where our problems come from. We'll understand how we cause problems for others. And if we follow the wheel of shock weapons, our minds will transform. It talks about anger. It talks about negative talk. It talks about selfishness. It talks about miserliness. It talks about greediness. It talks about using people. It talks about all of that and the result. So it's telling you what you do and the result. And on top of that, it's soliciting wrathful Manjushri to bless your mind that these teachings may sink in. So I would recommend all of you to hold these, to hold this text of the Wheel of Shock Weapons very close to you. I would recommend all departments of Kichar House to gather together and read this together once a week. Especially the heads of departments and the staff to read this once a week. Why? If you read this and you put it to your heart, harmony will grow faster. Then I would like Kichar House doing Tok for the non-Tantricas to read this while the Tantricas are doing the Puja quietly but together with a, a, a slight hum. So that would be very, very good. So this teaching should be read over and over again in all of our departments once a week. Doesn't it soothe your mind to know the causes of what, whatever you've experienced? Doesn't it, isn't it nice to know the causes and the effects of karma? Very, very powerful. If you take refuge in Buddha, you should follow karma. If you follow karma, you will transform. If you transform, you will make many, many beings happy. When you make many beings happy, that's the purpose of life. Very simple. So I'm very happy we recited all of that. In fact, I wanted to just recite about 25 verses and go, but it's very beautiful, it's very powerful. And I thought, well, that's the pilgrimage, inner pilgrimage today. So please, please, I request all of you to take that to the top and read it all the time. And those of you, are with, those of you without tantric empowerments, Tantric empowerments require long study of the sadhanas, long practice and recitation and meditation sadhanas. For those with non-tantric empowerments, this would be a very good sadhana to recite every single day. Every single day. Okay? Do you think, oh, but we're praying to Vajragini, now we're soliciting Yamataka? Yamataka is Vajragini's wisdom. Vajragini is Yamataka's great desire transformed. They are synonymous. They are one. When you pray to Yamataka, your ego will be reduced to do Vajragini's practice even better. Okay? Even us holding grudges, being angry with people, not letting go, what is the result? You can read here. Very, very simple. When, we're, when, we, when we always point out people's faults, we point out people's faults that we have ourselves. What is the result? Easy to make friends, easy to lose friends. Why? Why is it we cannot maintain people? 
It tells us the karma. Why do we displease our gurus? Why do our gurus scold us? And no matter what we seem to do, we get a scolding. Why? It tells you the result and the cause and the effect here. So we should read it carefully. We should study it. It should, it should be a very powerful practice. The three principal paths in the Lamrim are all included within this recitation. Okay? You do not need to sit in front of Yamataka to do it anywhere. So it'd be nice to make offerings on your altar. It's cut, sit comfortably, make three prostrations, sit comfortably, then recite this as a daily sadhana for non-tantricas. Tantricas who do it, your tantric practice will excel. Excel. In all departments should do it. There should be a motto for the eight, all the departments. All the departments, for example, should get, like KSA, should get together once a week and sit down together and read this through together and then do your work. So it reminds you. It will be very, very beautiful. Okay?